All right guys, what's up? My name is Matt Carlson and I'm a professional videographer based out of Indianapolis. For three years now, once a month, I shoot green screen car commercials right here in my apartment with a spokes model. And I've always wanted to do a BTS type of video to show the setup. So finally, here it is. Hey, hey, Mackenzie Roth in the house. Hey, hey. Good, how are you? Ready to make some TV magic? Yeah. <laughs> how you doing? Great, how Good. are you? Good, I've got wardrobe, all the things. Sweet. Let's go get ready. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing that I want to talk about is the lighting setup, because when you're shooting green screen, that's one of the most important things to get right so that you can pull a clean key. The light I'm using as a key light is the Aperture 120D Mark II and it's using this huge soft box light dome and that helps uh, soften the light so that the light that's hitting the spokes model's face is more flattering and the shadows are more flattering on her face with a softer light and also it'll help keep a lot of harsh shadows off of the green screen itself which you don't want. The fill light that I like to use is the Aperture Amaran 60D and it's a smaller output than the 120 d mark ii but it's good for a fill light and it also uses this light dome mini 2 softbox which helps the shadows on the spokes model's face as well as on the green screen now this other light that's helping light the green screen is just a, a gvm led panel and it's just helping to sort of bring in some light on the left side there of the green screen to even it out these are just little tube lights made by Yongnuo, and they're just kind of helping to fill in the bottom corners and right behind her legs on the green screen with light. And they're made by a company called Yongnuo. I'll put the links in the description of all these products. For today's shoot, I'm using the Sony a7S Mark III with the Sigma 28-70 lens and I'm shooting at 2.8 for most of this, just to keep the ISO down, because you want the noise level to be as low as possible when you're shooting green screen. Okay, Mackenzie, what do we got for outfits? Well, I would love to wear my Aviator Nation sweats. First <laughs> <laughs> five, yes, not those an are option. Hot. <laughs> okay, so I, we're doing the auto show today. So I was told to bring um, some gowns, some fun gowns. So we're, we have bright yellow, canary yellow, which I know you're like, wow, that's Ooh. like a lot of kins, but reads really well on camera because it's bright. Then cool. I have this fuchsia number and then kind of like a saucy little red. Okay, oh, wow. Cool. Wednesday. Okay. So we'll see. The crew actually usually picks. Matt, what's your vote? I like the yellow because it makes me feel like springtime, Sunshine. even though it is winter. The key to this whole setup is actually the monitor on top, the Atomos Shinobi. And the reason is, is because it has false color. And if you don't know what false color is, there are a lot of videos explaining what it is and how to use it. but when it comes to green screen, it is a really useful tool because it will help show you if you have any shadows on your green that your just naked eye cannot see. So if I go into false color, you'll notice that it's all gray. It's all even one color. There's a little bit of blue down in the bottom, which I could just adjust my tube light down there but it's all one color, which is what you want. Because if you have hot spots, it's gonna look like this. And that is going to pull a really ugly key and it will look like those old cheap commercials where you could see the green screen noise all around the talent. So you want that to be a solid color. So that's why false color is such a useful tool because you may with your naked eye, I don't know if you can tell, but there, you can see some shadows here and there, but when you pull it onto the computer, you're gonna be able to pull a really clean key as long as the false color is telling you that it's all consistent. Another really important aspect, obviously, is the green screen itself. So I've had a number of green screens throughout the years, and they're all basically 
you know, buy them on Amazon, fold them up, use them sparingly, and they get crazy wrinkles and you have to try to iron them out um, every time you get it out. Well, this green screen I found, which is made by Glide Gear, it actually goes around a frame. And because of that, it pulls it tight so that there aren't any creases. Because if you have creases on your green screen, you're gonna have shadows. And it's gonna create problems when you're trying to pull a key because it'll be a much darker color than the actual color that it's pulling as the key. So having this has saved me from having to try to iron out or put in the dryer or just whatever else to try to get all the wrinkles out. This way it pulls it tight and it's perfect every time. It also has a white side on the back of it. And so if you want to use it for headshots or anything with a white background, and then I have another one that has blue and black. So you can use the blue screen if your talent wants to wear something green and that's how you get around that. Now for audio, I'm having the talent wear a lavalier, which is the Rode Wireless Go 2. And basically, if your talent is a spokesmodel or somebody that's used to being on television, it's very easy. They can mic themselves up usually. So she basically just clips it to uh, her bra and that's where she wears her lavalier mic. With audio, you generally want to have redundancy, which means that you're recording multiple audio tracks on the same take. So therefore, I use a boom mic with her, and it's recording into just this Zoom H5. Now, when it comes to using boom mics, the biggest mistake that I see beginners make is they put the microphone way too far away from the talent's mouth whether it's an interview setting or a green screen setting like this where you want clean audio, they'll put the microphone way far away and just point it at them and then they'll get on the computer and they'll wonder why is it all echoey and doesn't sound professional. You want the microphone to be about a foot, foot and a half away from the talent's mouth. The closer you can get it to them, then the cleaner the audio is going to sound. And a lot of times I'm surprised that I have the microphone close to their mouth on top of the frame, but it's still not in the shot. So the closer you can get it to them, the better your audio is going to sound. Definitely use a sandbag with your boom mic because it's super top heavy and you don't want it falling over on your talent. I set up this old iPad so that McKinsey can quickly access the scripts so she can read them before she has to go on camera. One thing that I'm not gonna go super in depth on is camera settings, cause this is user specific a lot of times. I prefer to shoot at 60 frames per second at 1 25th of a shutter. And the main reason why is because, not that the spokes model is moving around quickly, but you definitely want to avoid motion blur when shooting green screen. This makes it really hard for the software to know where to key. And if there's motion blur with some green behind, say like her fingers or her hair or something like that, you're gonna see that in the, the key and it's not gonna look clean. Another thing you need to do in camera that's really important is the custom white balance. Really, you should do it anytime you're in a controlled lighting situation so that your white balance isn't moving around and so you get the best looking skin tones. But really it's important when you're shooting green screen so that your green stays the same color from clip to clip and isn't getting cooler or warmer. And also so that the skin tones look the best on the spokes model. All right, Mackenzie, what's your Instagram for people that want to follow the journey? All right, it's at Mackenzie Roth, M-C-K-I-N-Z-I-E-R-O-T-H. Uh -huh. At Ken Canley, official number one volume key dealer in Medina, Mentor, Alliance, and Boardman. How are we doing in here? <gasps> Fabulous. I have to change a number two. Ooh. This is a little uh, fuchsia number. <laughs> nice. Should I have a necklace? I think I'm going to add a little flair. Okay. Okay. So that's a quick rundown of the green screen setup here in my apartment. Like I said before, if I had more room, especially on the sides, I would get more lights in to hit just the green screen instead of lighting the spokes model and the green screen at the same time. But as long as that false color is consistent 
you know that once you get it on the computer, you're gonna be able to pull a clean key from that. Okay, Mackenzie, how was the shoot today? Shoot could not have gone better. Um, I am a one take wonder. <laughs> yes, you are. Makes my job so easy. <laughs> All right, and I'm off. Love it. I'm gonna be uploading a lot more YouTube videos in the future about photo and video. So if you'd like to follow along, just subscribe and you'll be notified when those come up. Thanks for watching.